Hello HP Touchpad users, great news. Today I'm going to show you how to install the latest Android data media builds onto the HP Touchpad. These are a new type of build, I'm going to get to explaining all about them. But first, at the top of the page here, you can find our navigation links. You can find this same thread at XDA. If this is your first time installing Android onto the HP Touchpad, you'll want to follow my full how to install guide the easy way here. And if you just want to update to non-data media builds, click on this first link. And last but not least, by MPGrim2, we have an incredible thread all about data media builds. Some very detailed information. We only go into a more simplified view and install guide here, so check out his information for sure. Look in the video's description to find all of these guides. Now I should note this is the second post in my how to update guide because there's been a very important need to separate the non-data media builds from the data media builds. So if you go to the first post, you'll find the information on how to install and update the non-data media builds. These are the current builds you have installed now. Read all about them. The same information applies to the data media builds, but has a different recovery. Because of some of the differences, we have to install them differently, and there's going to be a long explanation for that. But if you want to just stick to non-data media builds, Evervolve, Flintman of the Evervolve team, has created a great Android open source Android 4.4.2 ROM that's non-data media. So you don't even have to change. You can just do a clean install with the instructions in this guide and get the latest version of Android. Big thanks to Flintman. Next, we're going to take a little look at the Q&A, the information that will explain what a data media build is. You can look for a time code in the video's description if you'd like to go past this now. So what is a data media build? Previously, on the HP Touchpad, Android and WebOS shared SD card space in the media partition. This was the space you saw when transferring data with the USB cable. It stored all your media like music, pictures, movies, all that good stuff. Data media builds. Separate the Android and WebOS space by emulating a second extension 4 SD card in the data partition. This was the place where your app data was stored separate from your SD card media partition. You will need to move the majority of your free space from the media partition to the data partition. We can do this by using Flashful Zips, the WebOS Freeware app Taylor, or a few different Android apps. With this setup, the data partition now becomes the main place where your apps and user files, music, pictures, movies, everything like that, are stored. The leftover space in the media partition is now separate and only used by WebOS. WebOS will be left with just a small amount of free space and the majority will be given to the Android data partition. You will need to boot into WebOS to access its media SD card or use the Everball or JC Sullins builds. They'll allow you to see both partitions while inside of Android. Following these instructions will leave WebOS perfectly intact and it can be used for useful things like flashing the A6 firmware. This helps to keep the battery drain during sleep down. Next question, what are the advantages and changes for data media builds? New data media builds change the default partition layout to more efficiently use the available space. You get a larger area for storing your apps and games and mount an emulated extension 4 SD card on the data partition. The extension 4 SD card doesn't suffer from the same 4GB file size limit that the older FAT partition had. Now it's a 32-bit file system, you can have larger size files. Performance on the extended 4 SD card in Android is also probably better than FAT, at least that's what the definition I've read says, so theoretically it should be faster. The next advantage for HP Touchpad users is the updated 3.x kernels. We have a 3.0 kernel and a 3.4 kernel depending on which build you get. The updated kernels more efficiently communicate and allocates resources between the hardware and the software. So making things more efficient, theoretically it should run faster once we work out all the bugs. However, data media ROMs require newer data media recoveries to accommodate the newer partition format and SE Linux support. You also can't install them with the Acme installer. We have to use a recovery to install it. You can read Team Win's full definition about data media builds right here. Next question. Do I really need to do all this? How can I get back to my old setup? If you're happy with your current setup and Android version, there's no urgent need to upgrade. However, this is the direction all future builds will take. 
And if you understand the basic concepts of flashing ROMs and a previously installed Android with the Acme installer, then you should be ready to test out these new builds. Experienced users should back up all their data before trying out these new builds, absolutely everything that's personally important to you. If you wish to go back to your previous setup, you can use the new JC Selens and Phil's Touch Data Media Clockwork Mod Recoveries to restore your older Nandroid backups. I should note that the Phil's Touch Data Media Clockwork Mod also has a twerp mode so it can restore your twerp backups as well. Both JC Selens and Phil's Data Media Clockwork Mod Recoveries can see both SD cards while restoring your backups. The data partition will show up as SD card, and the media partition will show up as SD card 1. Note that due to the larger size of data media backups, you cannot advanced restore the data partition of a data media backup on a non-data media ROM. Please leave our talented developers some feedback in their respective threads. Reporting problems in the developers' threads and submitting logcats when requested can help to move development along and fix bugs. If you'd like to check your current partition size or version of Android, take a look at these instructions here. You can get this free application, the Quick System Info Pro app, to check your system partition size and remaining free space. You can also check your version of Android by going to Settings, About Tablet, and look at Android version. If you're uncomfortable with this guide and think it's too complicated, check out the Easy Way guide for first-time installers or the How to Update the Regular Non-Data Media Builds here. Now all the Q&A is covered, we're ready to start installing data media builds onto the HP touchpad. Step number one, uninstall Android and clean up your SD card. A, uninstall Android completely by using the Acme Uninstaller 2. Watch the instructional video by clicking this link here or scrolling down and seeing it on the page. It'll take you through all the steps and how to get it installed. Step one, B. Next, you will need to clean up your SD card before we can change our partition sizes. After you're finished uninstalling, you will automatically reboot into WebOS. Note, I would highly recommend making a backup and transferring it to your PC before removing Android. If you decide to go back to your old setup, this will make things a lot easier for you. B. Now, from WebOS, you must clear up enough space on the media partition in order to add that space to the data partition. You can do this quickly and easily by wiping all your SD card data from the reset options in WebOS. You could manually delete the files to clear up the space, but wiping all your data is highly recommended and ensures that the flashful zips will work correctly in step number three. If you have problems in step number three, come back to this step. Completely wipe your SD card by booting into WebOS and going to the Launcher icon, Settings, Device Info, Reset Options, and Erase USB Drive. The touchpad will then reboot itself and the data will be erased. Note this will not affect your WebOS setup, apps, or preware and is highly recommended. Everything will be left intact. Big important note, backup, backup, backup. This will delete absolutely everything on your SD card. Make sure you have all your personal data files backed up onto your computer. Also, don't forget to move your Nandroid backups onto your PC as well. By default, Clockwork Mod backups are located in SD card, Clockwork Mod, backup. Two, run the Acme Installer 5 Install Clockwork Mod and Mooboot. Now it's time to install Mooboot, Clockwork Mod, and set your system partition size to 600 megabytes by running the Acme Installer 5. We're going to need to download Clockwork Mod and Mooboot from the links below and place the zipped files into the CM install folder on our HP touchpad, just like we did uh, with my original how to install video. We're going to place these files, just the two files, into the CM install folder on the HP touchpad. Once the files are in place, reboot the HP touchpad into WebOS recovery mode. You do this by restarting the device and holding the volume up button. We'll then need to run the Acme Installer 5 from our computer. Again, if you're unfamiliar with this process, watch the full how to install video here, which will take you through everything step by step.
When you scroll down, you'll find two options for your Mooboot and Clockwork mod. Option number one is to download the standard JC Sullins Data Media Clockwork mod in Mooboot. Now anyone using Clockwork mod now will find this very familiar to them. The main difference is we'll be able to see both SD cards. SD card will be the data partition and SD card 1 will be the media partition. Both are accessible for flashing zips and restoring backups. Get both of these files for option number 1 and now option number 2. For option number 2 we can download Phil's Touch Interface Data Media Clockwork mod and JC Sullen's Mooboot. Now JC Sullen's has ported over Phil's recovery to work perfectly on the HP touchpad. It's fully touch interface based. You can do everything with a simple tap and scroll with your finger, or you can use the classic volume home and power buttons to navigate around. I'll be showing you how to use both, so never fear if this is new for you, but you want to try it out. I'd highly recommend it. It's been getting a lot of very positive reviews. In addition, Phil's recovery can also restore your twerp backups. You'll need to go down to twerp mode and enable it, and then you'll be able to restore twerp backups from either SD card. If you'd like to try this option, download Phil's Recovery and Mooboot, place them both into the CM install folder. Again, you should have only two files in this folder. Once you've run the Acme installer and installed Clockwork Mod and Mooboot, we're ready to move on to step number three. Switching the majority of your free space from the media partition to the data partition. With the basic partition layout set up, a system partition of 600 megabytes, recovery and Mooboot installed, we can now move your free SD card space from the media partition to the data partition. Here are a few different methods that we can use to accomplish this. I highly recommend using the flashable zips in step A. For the methods listed below, you'll need to refer to the recommended data media set up here. Here is the basic partition layout, and here is the data media partition layout, a before and after shot. Now, the idea is to leave about 3 gigabytes of space for WebOS. Now, you can get it as small as 400 megabytes, but you'll have to be using the older 3.0 versions, and you'll need to use the WebOS doctor to change that if necessary. I'd highly recommend just leaving it with a full install, about 3 gigabytes, so you can do things with WebOS still and still install preware and things like that. Now, a 16 gig touchpad will have about 11.5 gigabytes left on the data partition, and a 32 gig touchpad will have about 24.5 gigabytes. Please refer to MP Grimm's 2's thread for more detailed information about partition sizes. Now let's talk about method A, the recommended method using flashable zip files flash through recovery. Advanced users Graduler and the Ape have both created zips you can flash through recovery that can make the partition changes quick and easy. Download the desired zip files either directly to your touchpad or to your PC and then transfer them to the touchpad with the USB cable. There are several flashable zips available, but you must choose the one that best accommodates your model, 16 gig, 32, or even 64 gigabytes. It's recommended to use the largest possible zips for your model. If you look here, you can see I've hyperlinked them here, or you can check out their full guides in the first link here. For a 16 gig model, you want to use this max size. For a 32 gig model, you want this one. Or for 64, go for this one. Big thanks to Graduler and the Ape for creating these. Now a big note, before changing your partition sizes, you must have enough free space on the media partition in order to add that space to the data partition. If your zips fail to flash, make sure you've previously wiped the USB drive via instructions in step number one. Option B. Using Taylor. The WebOS Preware app Taylor can be used to make the necessary partition changes. This method also works well, but can take longer to set up and complete. Note, make sure your HP touchpad is fully charged before making changes with Taylor. It can take quite a long time to complete. Make sure you're fully charged before beginning. Also, checking the file system and resizing partitions can take some time, so please be patient. If you get an error during the file check, just run it again. Do not, absolutely do not, restart or shut down the device until it completes. Read all about using Taylor in Graduler's thread or watch my video right here.
One important note, if you accidentally interrupt Taylor or restart the device, anything catastrophic happens, you can run the WebOS Doctor. Now you'll run that in the event that you can no longer boot WebOS. See the troubleshooting section. I have a full video and information for that. You can also click this link here. Now option C, Android partition changing apps. There are a number of apps in the Play Store that could help you change the partition sizes. If you say miss this step or already have a data media ROM installed and want to know how to change it, this is another option. Now these apps, you can get them from the Play Store, but you may need to get a paid version to access all the options. Here's the one, and here is the other. This is the paid one, this is the free one. You can report back about what success you've had with them. But again, I wouldn't recommend those. I'd recommend doing the flashable zips if possible. This is more if you've missed the steps or you want to do it from Android for some reason. Step number four, how to install Android 4.4.2 data media builds. Now that we've installed Clockwork Mod, Mooboot, and set up our partition sizes, we're ready to install Android by flashing the ROM and GFs package through recovery. Consult the Android 4.4.2 guide below and download any of the five available Android data media ROMs by visiting their corresponding threads. Download your selected Android ROM and GFs package directly to your tablet, or transfer them over to the touchpad with the USB cable after downloading them from your PC. Down below you'll find additional recoveries again. I should note there's a data media twerp available, but you're only going to get that for Flintman's Evervolve ROM. It won't flash the sign engine mod ROMs properly, but it's great if you're using Evervolve. A little bit further down the page, we have links to all the threads where all our available ROMs are. We'll need to visit the threads and download our selected ROM. You'll note that some of them have different kernels depending on which version you're using. You can go check out each version and give thanks to their developers. We've got to thank, of course, Flintman, Milak, Invisible K, JC Sullins, and now 62. Big thanks to all our developers. Down below, you can also find the older Android 4.3.1 data media build. It's a great data media build. It's the most mature one at this moment, and everything runs pretty much perfectly. Check it out if you're interested. And just below that, here's all our GApps downloads. Now, if you can't find the GApps download on the main page, don't worry, it's just not there at the moment. Hopefully, it'll be there sometime soon. But here's additional download links for developer-made GApps packages. You can also get the recommended one in each developer's thread. Once we've got our selected ROM and GFs package on our device, we're ready to reboot into recovery. I'm going to show you both procedures for installing from JC Sullen's Data Media Clockwork Mod and Phil's Data Media Clockwork Mod. Let's get started. To install our ROM, we're going to first reboot from WebOS, go to the Launcher, Settings, Device Info, and Reset Options. We're going to choose Restart, and we're going to need to pay attention so we can select Clockwork Mod from the Mooboot list as it comes up. Use that volume button to go to it, and Home to select it. And here we are in the latest JC Sullins Data Media Clockwork Mod recovery. It's very familiar to anyone using Clockwork Mod now. Use the Volume and Home buttons to navigate around. We're going to go to Install Zip. Now we want to choose SD card 1 because it's likely where our data is going to be. This is the media partition seen in WebOS. If we transfer the data over from our computer, it'll be here in this folder right here. If we downloaded it directly to the device, it'll be in the downloads folder here. Simply open up the folder and you can flash these zips. It doesn't matter which location it's in. First we'll install our partition changing zip. Scroll down to the bottom of the list there to find it. Note that this will change depending on the size of the memory that your HP touchpad has. Select it and yes, install it. Once this is completed, we'll need to reboot our device before installing any other zips. Now it's complete, we'll go back and restart our HP touchpad and we'll be ready to install our ROM and GFs package. Here we are, back in Clockwork Mod. Go to Install Zip, again go to SD Card 1. Now let's select our ROM and install it. Select it from the list and go Yes Install. This can take a few minutes, so please be patient. Now that our ROM is installed, we simply need to install the GFs package as well. We'll need to 
go back and select the GFs package from the list. Yes, install it. And just wait another moment or two. Now that our ROM and GFs package have been fully installed, we simply need to reboot the device. You'll see your ROM's boot animation come up on the screen. Note this can take several minutes to complete, so please be patient. And then you'll be using the latest data media versions of Android on the HP touchpad. Now I'm going to show you that exact same procedure using Phil's data media clockwork mod touch. Here we are in Phil's recovery. Now we can navigate around by swiping and touching or we can use the classic volume home and power buttons to navigate whatever you like. Go to install zip and we're going to need to choose SD card 1 for the media partition. Now if you transferred this with the PC it'll be in this folder here or if you downloaded it to the device it'll be in the download folder here. Either one is just fine. First we'll install our partition changing zip, select it, and yes install it. Once this is completed we'll need to reboot our device before installing any other zips. Now it's complete we'll go back and restart our HP touchpad and we'll be ready to install our ROM and GFs package. Here we are back in clockwork mod go to install zip again go to SD card 1 now let's select the ROM and install it yes install once the ROM's finished installing tap the screen to continue again we'll need to go install zip from SD card 1 and locate our 4.4 G apps package yes install once everything's installed, simply reboot the device and start using our latest data media builds. Now back to the troubleshooting section. Now hopefully we've got everything installed correctly, but just in case I have a full troubleshooting section. First off, some notes, fixes, and tweaks. Come here to check out flash support, something very frequently asked. How do I get flash support? Well, you need to install a flash APK and use a supported browser. Follow this link here to watch an instructional video. Next up, Netflix support. Some of the ROMs may support Netflix now, but if they don't have Netflix support, you can add it by following this gray thread here. And some additional troubleshooting information. If you have these particular problems, quite a few, won't go over them all. Next up, bricking and boot loop help and fixes. If you're stuck in a boot loop, here is what to do, how to recover your device. And if it's bricked, perhaps, you can check out JC Sullen's full thread here. All the information is in the bricking, boot loop, and help and fixes. Now, this is an important section. If you have a problem, make sure you check this out. Next we have how and when to use the WebOS Doctor. Now if you can no longer boot WebOS, you had a problem with Taylor or anything in between, you can fix it up like this. First I'd highly recommend uninstalling Android, an important step. But here's the full instructions, everything you need to know, how and when to use the WebOS Doctor. And finally, the A6 firmware flashing instructions, a great thing you can still do from WebOS that'll help improve longevity and battery life for our incredible HP touchpad. Lastly, but certainly not least, we need to donate to our developers once in a while to show our appreciation for their hard work and continued support of the HP touchpad. We have an incredible unique device that's been getting updates for three years, the latest kernels, the latest versions of Android, everything working and just an incredible device. I'm so happy to have one in my family. I've got them for relatives. Keep everybody up to date. And these are the people that make it all possible. Who knows how far we can take it if we support them. They'll keep supporting us with new updates and newer versions of Android. As long as we keep getting development, I'll keep making videos, I'll keep making guides, and I'll try to keep you guys as updated as I possibly can. Big thanks to all our talented developers, and big thanks to you guys, the users, for subscribing and watching. Hopefully we'll get as far as Android 5.0. Happy flashing, everybody.